start again. Uh, so hello again. So welcome to the 16th edition of Odka Shorts Coimbatore. A uh, few of you might be new to Odka Shorts. So Odka stands for Value Oriented Discussion on Quality Analysis, a forum to strengthen the QA community through knowledge sharing with a motto of come learn something new. So let's just start by getting to know about the host. I'm Jen C, working as a consultant QA, close to two years at ThoughtWorks Coimbatore. And I'm delighted to co-host this session with Janani. Now I'm passing on to my co-host Janani to take over to introduce herself. Thank you, Jensi. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Janani. Uh, I joined ThoughtWorks uh, last year and I'm a quality analyst. And yeah, thank you, Jensi. We can get started. Yeah, uh, thank you, Janani. Uh, so the agenda for today's session is we have fantastic speakers lined up for a welcome note, followed by the QA topics that you would have seen in the invite or in the posters or via email. So the first is a deep dive into iOS testing by Rajesh Kumar and Usha Sai. And the second topic is performance test strategy in Unity project by Usha R. And we will also have an interesting quiz lined after each topic. But before we move into the session, uh, like if you have any questions, please to post it in the chat or in the Q&A box in the chat, or, I mean, in the uh, Zoom. So also at the end of each session, we will have five minutes for you to ask your questions directly to the speaker. So uh, let's get started. Uh, now we have Gayatri Pandian with us who will give us a welcome note. So Gayatri plays the role of general manager for ThoughtWorks, Coimbatore and Chennai. She has worn multiple hats in her career as a quality analyst, as a business analyst, as a data product owner, and now the office principal, AKA market unit leader for Chennai. She has also worked across various domains like insurance, human capital management, data uh, analytics, etc. So irrespective of the role, it has always been about cherishing people, tasting success together, of challenging each other and taking everyone along the success journey, says Gayatri. So now I hereby invite Gayatri to say a few words of welcome and share her thoughts on Odka Shorts with us today. So over to you, Gayatri. Thank you, Jensi. Uh, am I audible, folks? All yes. Good? Okay, cool. Uh, thank you very much for the lovely introduction. So it has been uh, really great. And looking back of how the journey has been itself is, it's quite something, right? Uh, so starting off as a QA and then being invited uh, to a vodka uh, for an invite is it's something nice. And uh, okay, a couple of things, right? When I joined uh, ThoughtWorks, the first thing when I got to know about vodka was like, I was like, okay, what kind of a cure name is this? Uh, who names their events like this? That's something that has always resonated. And then I got to know, okay, uh, value added discussions on quality analysis. All right. And you know what? Now uh, Chennai has a different event that is called a tequila. And then I was like, okay, how do you get all these names? Uh, is it something that comes out of a brainstorming or where does it come? And you know what the answer I got? Uh, they said tequila was something which was earlier there in ThoughtWorks as well. I think it was in Bangalore or somewhere else. And now we, we just brought back tequila, they said. I was like, okay, that, that seems to be something for the names. I'm not going to get into it. So uh, very happy to be here, folks. And especially the, all the vodka. I mean, I've been looking at some of the recordings that have been there and this being the 16th edition, right? I think it has been going strong over the years uh, in spite of the pandemic, the ups and downs, because bringing it all together and bringing people in one place and bringing it together, right? I think that involves a lot of effort. So kudos to all the organizers and all the people who have been putting in effort time and again to ensure that we are able to deliver this value for people and to come together as a community to ensure that we are there for each other. We as a community as stand for each other and uh, as a sounding board, as somebody who's there to challenge each other, right? It is not just about sounding board and saying, yes, we are there, okay. It's also about to challenge each other to see that we are growing better. I think this community is doing great on that aspect and uh, very, very happy to kickstart this. So yeah, thank you so much. And uh, let's get it started. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri, for the warm welcome note. So now uh, let's get into the session, uh, deep dive into IOS testing. So we have uh, Rajesh Kumar Ayadurai, who has joined ThoughtWorks as a senior consultant with an year ago, and he has total 10 years of experience. And he has gained extensive knowledge on various uh, Java and Python based test automation frameworks and tools. And he's interested in exploring modern suite of testing tools and frameworks. We also have Usha Sai, who's working as a senior consultant with around three years of experience. And she has worked extensively on various test automation tools and passionate about uh, building need based testing solutions 
for the fast paced agile environment so now uh, i am handing over to the speakers thanks for the awesome introductions janani <laughs> so cool uh, let me share my screen uh, is my ppt visible yeah cool uh, so as uh, janani and jency were pointing out uh, today we'll be giving a topic around deep diving into ios testing using xeui test framework before jumping into the actual content which we have prepared a uh, one prerequisite is if there are any questions at any particular point of time feel free to post them in the chat box or in q and a we'll be very happy to answer them and even towards the end of the session we'll be looking into it so it's a must to ask questions keep that in mind moving ahead uh, so this is the agenda which we have planned so rajesh and i were working for a retail client around last year and both of us were like pretty new to ios testing like we didn't know anything about how to start over with it and this is how we started over our journey so we firstly got to know what is ios testing like the very first basic question like what is ios testing should we do it or not then once we got a fair understanding then we jumped into comparison of various ios automation tools then we had uh, we out of all the automation tools we were uh, looking into specifically xeui test framework so we have understood why should we choose this particular uh, automation framework followed by we'll be giving you a quick demo on what this xeui test framework actually is then we'll look into the different locator strategies which are present in xeui test framework and we'll know about something called xeui test apis what these apis are and how are they being useful and one of the mobile specific topic which is gestures and actions we'll understand what these particular terminologies mean and how are we going to automate it using xeui test framework then uh, followed by we have a quick demo on parallel execution and uh, towards the end uh, rajesh and i would be sharing some of the challenges which we have faced in our journey of ios testing and a uh, last 5 to 10 minutes q and a so this is the overall agenda which we have planned without further ado we'll quickly deep dive into the introduction of ios testing so when we say like when uh, when we were assigned to project we weren't fully sure on what this particular ios testing terminology mean and through lots of research or kind of googling we got to know in this particular testing what we what is the basic intention is we have to test an ios application the ios application it could be a native app like it could be very specific to ios platform or it could be a hybrid app like when i say hybrid it could be like the code base is same but you can host it across different platforms like android or web or ios so irrespective of that particular uh, fact whenever uh, we test this particular ios application on real device what do i mean by real device it's any real iphone or ios device like ipad or tablets or watch watch os anything of that sort or simulator simulator is an imitation of the real device which has the same set of controllers uh, during the development and testing phase simulator is one of the easy way to kind of check the functionalities so we can test our ios application even on simulator or in any cloud platform for instance browser stack or source labs what this cloud platforms do is they provide us an uh, virtual real device via the device id we can communicate with the devices which are present on the cloud and do the real time testing so uh, at the end of the day we can test our ios application in any of these three forums like on the real device or on the simulator or any virtual device and ensure if the features or the app or the functionality of the app is looking as expected so this is the main agenda of ios testing now as we have got to know what ios testing is later down the lane we wanted to do the automation part and because of the advancements in technology and the full fledged growth in market there are like n number of ios automation tools which are readily available some of them to point out which you can see on my screen like apm calabash xui test apart from it there are many others like we have robotium celendroid kif keep it functional earl grey so out of all these tools for this particular session we'll be focusing on these three uh, tools which is apm calabash and xui test uh, so all the comparisons which we have jotted down in this particular slide are based on the experiences which we had while dealing with these tools so starting with the very first parameter to do the analysis on which is cross platform support uh, what do i mean by the term like if uh, my uh, automation script whatever i am uh, i am generating is it capable of checking in multiple platforms like let's say i created a script 
is it capable of checking the functionality both on ios and android and or, or web so it's cross platform support and yeah for apm and calabash we do have cross platform support but xui okay. test we don't have cross platform support it's very specific to ios uh, and the next parameter which is languages supported for mm -hmm. apm and calabash we have a wide community support which in turn led to many languages like we can see everyday enhancements or everyday jargons created in various languages to kind of support the functionality. Some of them uh, on a very high level are Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript. And apart from the ones which are mentioned, there are many active development work which is going on in the forum front. So yeah, it has like wide uh, language support for both APM and Calabash. But when we come to XUI test, it supports only two languages, which is Objective-C and Swift. I, I would be saying it's a good enough parameter. It's because whenever we do an iOS app development, right, uh, the tech stack or the languages which are used for the actual iOS app development would be either Swift or Objective-C. So even our automation would be in the same tech stack. So it's kind of uh, goes hands in hand. So it's not a, a negative parameter, but it's kind of moderate enough to have these two languages support. And the next parameter, which is ease of setup, like the amount of time in order to get your setup up and at least run a base test, like base framework setup. For APM, it takes a good amount of time in setup. So generally uh, in APM, most of the work uh, goes with the setup itself. So it does take a good amount of time in setup. Uh, and I've even uh, uh, heard people, uh, people would be, uh, a very much uh, involved in setup like if you do the setup most of the framework is done so that's how it is termed but recently there is a simple installer which is uh, developed by the community which kinds of makes the setup process pretty easy but irrespective of the time it takes good amount of time in getting your first set up and running for calabash it takes a moderate amount of time less than apm but a little more than xui test and xui test it's very simple and easy it's just a couple of clicks away uh, okay. Later down the demo, I'll be showing you how we can set up this particular framework. But yeah, you can see it would happen in like one to two minutes. So it's pretty quicker. And the next thing, which is record and playback, like the ability to automatically generate the automation script uh, while doing certain actions on the application. So yes, in APM and in XUI test, we have the record and playback uh, support. But in Calabash, we don't have it. Coming to one of the parameter, which is execution time in APM, the test runs are pretty slow in Calabash. Uh, it's kind of very more because in Calabash, whenever you run the test rate for every test, there would be a fresh installation, which takes place. So it kinds of increases the amount of execution time. And in XUI test, it's faster execution. It's faster because the code base, uh, when I say the code base, the actual app, which is developed that particular code, and the automation code which we are going to write, they kind of lie in the same repository. That kind of makes easy for the connection and the uh, execution would be very fast. And the last parameter, which is cost, all the three uh, automation tools which I've compared in this particular slide, which is APM, Calabash, and XUI test, all of them are free and open source. So you don't need to explicitly purchase for any extra additional features. So it's kind of very quick to kind of get them and start working on it. Because of certain advantages, like the quick uh, process of setting it up and kind of running the test in a full-fledged full manner, uh, in the later part of the demo, we'll be looking into XEUI test framework. So let's go ahead and understand in a little depth what this XEUI test framework actually is. Yep. Uh, let me quickly give a brief overview on uh, what is this XEUI testing framework is. So uh, just a quick flashback about this XEUI testing framework. Uh, before this XEUI testing framework was launched by Apple. So uh, there was a testing bundle which comes along with the application development framework. I, I mean, I was application development framework. So while we were able to do only the unit testing. So uh, later Apple have planned to, have planned to uh, introduce this UI testing framework called XAUI test on uh, the year of 2015. And uh, it actually supports to, uh, I mean, it actually supports to test the applications that are developed for iOS platform, so which we call it as a native uh, application. And uh, the applications are developed in two languages, one is Swift and Objective-C. Uh, so 
moving on uh, apart from the ui testing framework right uh, as i already highlighted uh, it does support for unit testing and also it does performance tests for the ios native applications so uh, when i talk about performance tests right so it helps us to uh, measure the cpu metric or memory metric so those kind of basic measures will be able to yield from this uh, performance test and uh, there is a limitation with XAUI test, so which supports only for the native applications of uh, iOS platform. It's not supported for the, any other platform applications. And now we have talked about the what part of it, and let's look at the uh, other side of, I mean, why part of it. So uh, by default, it is, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, hel it helps us to achieve a better execution speed in terms of the, uh, uh, Test execution. I'll tell you why. That's because uh, so this as I already highlighted it, this XUI test framework, which comes along with iOS application development framework, and there is a famous saying called XUI test is closer to the metal, which does which means that which is tightly integrated to the application development framework, and hence it has better synchronization between each of the uh, stack. I mean between the uh, XUI test and the application development framework. So that in turn help us to achieve better execution speed in terms of the test execution. So apart from that, uh, XUI test also promises that uh, it is always up to date, which means that uh, whenever there is an upgrade happen to the application development framework, obviously there will be a uh, upgrade happen to testing framework as well as it comes as a bundle. And uh, the second part is about a tech stack. We have, uh, for both XUI test and the application development framework, in tech stack, what we are going to use is going to be same. Uh, in term, let's say let's consider the languages. Obviously, it's going to be Objective C and Swift in case of XUI test as well. And uh, let's say if I want to use dependency manager like Cocoa Bots, right? So it is same even for both the aspects. And uh, similar to that, we we, we can even use Swift package manage, manager, etc. And obviously the IDE, so the platform where we develop is going to be same across. And uh, we can also see an advantage of increased collaboration with developers, which means that, uh, let's say, for example, uh, uh, I'm collaborating with a developer in terms of, let's say, for example, as a QA, I have been asked to develop a simple automation framework. Uh, so what I can do is I can simply set up an automation framework and I can very well collaborate with, with my developer in terms of how I have uh, developed it and I can, uh, since the languages are meeting right here, it's going to be Objective C and Swift, and they can very well understand, and they'll be able to. I mean, the developers will be able to help me with the uh, suggestions so that I can take my framework to the better shape, and that's one of the advantages of uh, having the same same tech stack between both the QA and developers. And uh, the last aspect is about improved accessibility. Yep. Uh, so XUI test supports for the basic accessibility testing and. Basically, accessibility technology means that uh, it enables the application application accessible even for the disabled people, like you know, people with hearing disability and visual impairment, etc. So that's uh, one of the big advantage of this XUI test framework. And moving on, let's look at a quick demo of the basic test. Yes. So we'll be going uh, through a quick demo. So for this demo, the prerequisites are we need to have Xcode. So Xcode is an Apple, Apple developed IDE, which is basically used for both the development of the application, like the iOS app. And even for automation also, we can use the same Xcode IDE. Uh, the biggest advantage of this particular Xcode IDE is it has inbuilt simulators, which makes the process of development and even the testing very easy. So yeah, this is the URL from where uh, we can download the Xcode ID. We'll be sharing it towards the end of the talk. And the next, uh, like once the Xcode ID is in place, you can very well go ahead and clone the GitHub repo. So this is the GitHub repo where we have placed all our code. So you can directly go ahead and clone it. So just for instance, I'm just cloning it. So I, you just need to go ahead and do like get clone the repo, whatever we will be sharing this URL towards the end of the talk. But yeah, once you clone it, uh, for uh, now I've already cloned it and I've placed it in my documents folder and you'll be getting a directory of this sort, which is iOS testing app. 
and inside you see multiple subdirectories like iOS testing, iOS testing UI test. I'll be explaining them at a later part what they are. But yeah, for now, the package or the file which you need to open is this particular .exe workspace, like iOS testing.exe workspace. You need to open it via the Xcode terminal. So once you open it, this is how the structure uh, it would come up. And as you see, it's the same, like it has one particular iOS testing and inside that you have uh, multiple subdirectories, iOS testing. So in iOS testing, what we have, it's, it has the entire code, like the actual development code of the app. Uh, we won't be going into details of what the app is. I'll be just giving you an overview on what the app functionality is. And we have many other folders. Uh, out of all these, we would be dealing mostly with this iOS testing UI test as part of the current session. So how we have to build the app, uh, building the app using Xcode is simple, is, uh, is super easy. Uh, so firstly, you just need to click on this particular run button, which you see, uh, you can, you should be selecting the target. Target basically means what's the particular application you are pointing to, or what's the uh, target you want to launch onto the simulator. So I'm selecting iOS testing because it has all the code. And uh, in here, I see a bunch of simulators options. Out of all this, like, you can select whatever is feasible for you uh, for the testing per se. But for instance, I'm using iPhone 13 Pro. Once I set this particular configuration, like my target is selected and the simulator is chosen, I just need to click on run button. And as you see, firstly, what happens? A build happens. Uh, in During the build process, my entire code which I've developed, all those would be compiled. And then uh, the app would be launched on the simulator, whatever I've mentioned. So as you can see on the right side, uh, on my simulator, an app got opened. I'm just closing it just to show you. So this is the app which gets uh, installed onto your simulator named iOS testing. And once you open it, this is the home screen. Like by default, whenever you launch your application or run your application from the Xcode, it would be opening the home screen, whatever you have set in. So for me, the home screen is this, so it by default gets launched. Now in this particular application, it's a very simple application. It basically, it has three buttons. Uh, one named button. So if we go inside that, it opens a view wherein I can enter first name, like let's say something and last name, maybe something. And when I click on get name, it's going to give me a combination of my first name and last name. So it's very simple feature. And we have two other functionalities in which one is for vertical scroll, where I can move the elements uh, in up and down direction. And the other one is horizontal spy where I can move the elements in left and right direction. So for the rest of the content, we'll be focusing on only three, these three particular features. So this is how the app works. Now going ahead with understanding how to actually add our automation test. So once the app development is done, what we have to do for adding our uh, automation test, we just need to click on Xcode. In the menu bar, we see something called file. Over there, file, we need to go for new. We need to add a target now. And in target, uh, you can go ahead and search for UI. And you will be getting this UI testing bundle. So this is the testing bundle, which kind of uh, helps us in the automation. Like it gives us the XE test, uh, which would be used for the automation purpose. So once I go ahead with this, uh, select this UI testing bundle, click on next. It will be showing me the name uh, of the particular package I want it to be. By default, it suggests me this name. So I'll be going ahead with it. I've already added it. So I'm clicking on cancel. And this is the directory which gets created. Now the advantage of this particular directory is now my app and the automation test would be directly linked. Now I can very well go ahead directly create the files with the test. For instance, I've created one very basic test. So I've created a class named this. And as you can see, by default, the advantage is uh, it gets imported with XE test. This is used for the automation purpose. And yeah, uh, I won't be deep diving into certain terminologies, but yeah, uh, one of the major thing which you have to keep in mind is uh, while uh, when you do automation using XEUI test, your test should be having a prefix called TEST. For instance, uh, you can see in here two tests in which one, is named this is not a test like it doesn't have any text prefix so what it happens is it considers it's a general function there isn't any test related feature like we can't run this particular function but in the next scenario what i have done is i've added this text prefix 
So what happens is Xcode considers this as a new UI test and we can run it. Now, how am I saying that I can run it? You can see this particular run button, which is there right beside the function. So this kind of helps us in figuring out if the function which we have created is a test or not. Uh, so uh, in this particular test, which I've created, it's very basic test. Uh, I'm initializing my app. So XUI application uh, points to the application, which is there on my simulator. I'm launching my app so that the home screen gets open. And in there, I'm doing certain functionality, like I'm clicking on button. So if I have to show you in the simulator parallelly, I'm clicking on button. I'm, uh, uh, I'm checking if the first name field is existing or not and accordingly tapping on it if it exists and typing in a name. So type test is a function which is a, uh, which is the way in which you can communicate with the screen. So what this function internally does is it would type this particular uh, string which I've given in here. So it types Susha Sai and similar thing goes for last name. It types Shinta and at the very end, it would give me the name. So this is the overall functionality. Now let's just quickly go and run this particular test and see how it's going to perform. So whenever you run the test for the very first time, it asks you permission. This permission is for letting the test access. So I'm just giving the password. So in the top, you can see the testing. So it's building in the background. Whatever test I've written, uh, it's kind of getting built in the background. Okay. Uh, seems like, yeah. Uh, as you see, okay, uh, I'll be showing it to you at a later point, but yeah, now the app got launched, it clicked on button. It's entering the details, whatever I've provided, and now it's going to click on get name and it validated if the text is present or not. So one thing which you notice is there is this particular target which got added, which is XC iOS testing UI test, which is the same name as this. So whenever we run the UI automation test, if it's not there, then accordingly the app installation and the testing target installation takes place and our test would run. So this is how simply we can uh, set up the automation repo. Now going ahead, we uh, let's quickly deep dive into different locator strategies which are present in iOS. Yep. So like any other automation tool, even XAY test has uh, support to different uh, locator strategies. So just to get started with, uh, accessibility ID is one. Uh, it's a preferred way of locating an element in XAY application. So when using XAY test framework, so uh, how it works is like. Uh, uh, I mean, when when developer develops an application, so he'll be uh, he or she will be providing a, a ID or any property, unique property associated to every element that are present in the screen. So based on that, it basically identifies, uh, which we call it as identifier here, and that's how it works. It's the most preferred way of uh, identifying or locating any object uh, in application under test. And the second preferred way of uh, identifying is via label. So, which we have, uh, I think most of us are familiar with uh, identif identifying by label. So, what are, the what are the text that we see on the screen, right? Or application, based on that, we'll simply provide a text name. If you could see the sample snippet given here, XUA application dot static text of uh, the text, whatever we see on the screen. And the third way of is, I mean, third way is via first match. So, let's say, for example, uh, there are a group of texts that are matching uh, for the same a similar identifier, then probably we can uh, go with first match. It's a built-in method to just uh, pick the very first element in the list. And the next way of doing it is index. So it is more or less similar to first match, but uh, here, let's say there are uh, uh, matches. I mean, there are a list of matches for a particular search, right? So probably if you want to locate a particular index and we just go by the uh, index, which you can see here for now, it has, put the, I mean, it has been given as zero. And if you want to change to the based on index, you can very well change. And the last one is about subview. So this is also one of the important uh, uh, what uh, locator strategy that we use in XC test. 
whenever uh, we don't see any unique property for a particular element, and probably we'll start with the ancestor element or any of the uh, parent element on the on the model of relationship. From there, we'll try, try to traverse to uh, that particular element, which we are trying to uh, find out. So let me. So uh, here it is. So just quick demo on the locator strategy. So I'll just show you how you actually uh, inspect the element in XUITS. So let's say, for example, I keep a breakpoint here. I've just taken one test from the list and uh, I kept a breakpoint. You just simply click on the line number, which will uh, enable your breakpoint and I'll simply run it so that uh, the execution will halt at some point of time when it reaches the breakpoint. And that's when the debugger will be enabled automatically. Yeah, you can see here in the console, LLDB, which is nothing but the debugger has been activated. Uh, LLDB is nothing but low level debug bridge. So what you can do is uh, we usually start with print object. So PO stands for print object. Uh, it's a short form of print object. Uh, so this is the way we usually, uh, uh, I mean, inspect the element in the un under application application under this. So what you can type is application, XUA application. It's an API uh, which is used to manage the life cycle of an application. So I'll simply add static text. So I, uh, for now I kept my uh, emulator on dark mode. That's why you might not be able to see many of the text present here, but it is again the same application what Wush has uh, shown us. So. I just uh, given static text. The expectation is to just list all the static text that are matching uh, on this particular screen. Yeah, uh, it started getting all the text. So you can see here as an output of this uh, uh, particular code snippet, we have got uh, all the static text, which is nothing but features and uh, assignment, which is present here. And similarly, other texts are present in the same screen. And uh, Let's say, for example, if I want to match the very first text, I can simply go with first match. So it's a, another built in method. If you execute this code, it will basically uh, point the features text because that's the one which is getting matched. It takes some time here. However, overall, this is how it works. Uh, this is how we keep the breakpoint and enable the debugger area. Yeah, sorry, uh, you can see here, first match is uh, written with an output of capturing feature sticks. And if you wanna go with index, yeah, you can go with index as well. Let's say start text element, uh, you can, sorry. yeah, you can go with bound by wherein you can provide the index as one. Yeah, we returned an output of a uh, text called SN, which is getting matched in the position of one. Uh, that's about a quick demo on the locator strategies and sorry. So uh, moving ahead with uh, the XUI test API. So on the XUI test API, right? So applications, I mean, APIs play a main role in uh, uh, XUI test. So these are the different XUI test APIs that are present in XUI test. XUI application, as I already pinpointed, uh, XUI application uh, is the API which helps us to manage the life, cy life cycle of an application, uh, which starts with launching an application and launching the application with the different arguments uh, with different environment de details. And if you want to quit or kill the application, right? It is all taken care by the XUI application API. And the second one is XUI element query API. So what it does is, uh, so it, it actually plays a main role behind the scene, behind the XUI test, which means that though we do not directly see this particular API while coding, but uh, what it does in the back end is, let's say for example, uh, in the case of subviews, what we have talked before, uh, wherein we are trying to find the element by by its relationship, like through the ancestor or any of the parent element. So it has a default method called containing, matching, and also 
uh, it basically gets the required search criteria. Let's say, for example, parents' unique property. And based on that, it will try to find or locate an element or application under test. So that's what the job of this HCU element query. And uh, the third most, uh, I mean, the third uh, important API is XCUA element API. So let's say, for example, we have launched the application and we have also identified the locator or identify the element uh, on which we are going to perform now perform an ac action. So uh, uh, what are the different op actions that we are going to perform? Uh, so let's say if it's a tap, pinch. So these are all the different actions that we usually perform on any application, mobile application. So all these can be handled via this XCUA element. API. And apart from these three important uh, APIs, uh, we do have different APIs like XCUA screenshot, XCUA Siri service, just to simulate the behaviors on the Siri, uh, uh, I mean, Siri application, Siri based application. So these are the example of this XCUA test APIs. And moving on with the important topic called gestures and actions. Yes. Uh, so whenever we deal with uh, applications on mobile front, right, one of the common terminology which we get to know would be gestures. So what do we mean by gestures? Uh, these are the events uh, wherein the user interacts with the app via the screen. Uh, some to point out are we have like tap action, we have like double click action, we have like zoom in, zoom out, like we do it via our fingers on the screen and the app correspondingly responds to it. So all these actions are termed as gestures. Now, once we know, we can test all these features via the manual testing. But the question comes is how to automate even all these gestures because during automation, uh, we there won't be any manual intervention, right? So how are we going to process it? So for that, uh, XCUI test framework, it by default provides us with many uh, inbuilt function which supports these gestures. Some of them to highlight. So we have tapping. So whenever we perform tap, uh, is my screen visible? Yep. Okay. Uh, so we have a function called tap. What this tap function does is whenever we call this on the element, like for in here, you can see the syntax. I'm saying XUI application. I'm calling the application. And in there, I'm choosing one particular button. Let's say a button name. I'm giving it. So it's getting the... Uh, button and on that particular element I'm doing dot tap what this dot tap internally does is it goes and clicks the particular button element which we have chosen so it's very simple like dot tap is the inbuilt function provided by XCUI test framework to kind of do the operation similar to tap we have many other uh, things in the same line something like uh, double tap two finger tap and we can even give a a uh, super function wherein we can uh, define how many taps to do it. It could be like triple tap on using three fingers. So even that level of complexity, we can uh, handle it via the tap function, which is provided by XCUI test framework. Apart from tapping, we have something called swiping. So swiping, as the name suggests, in here we'll be doing a swipe on the element. So we have inbuilt functions again for this name, like swipe up, wherein we do a swipe up on the element. The syntax for it is again simple. I'm just doing XCY application dot static test text name. I'm getting a text and on that particular text element, I'm doing a swipe up. Similar to swipe up, we can do rest of all the other actions, swipe down, swipe right, swipe left. So all these are again the inbuilt functions which could be used on the element uh, by default provided by XCY test framework, which we could use and run on top of it. Then one of the other common gesture function which you use is press. A uh, pressing basically means uh, holding on an element for certain duration. So the syntax for it is approximately same. We'll be defining the button or the element wherein we want to do the press action. And in press, the major factor is for how much duration I want to press or hold on that particular button. So this press function provides us that particular duration. This duration by default, it takes input in seconds. So for in here, I'm giving for duration to so it's going to uh, press uh, like tap and hold on that particular element for two seconds. So this is how the press function works. Apart from it, there are many other inbuilt functions like we have for 
pinching, rotating. We can even interact with the pickers and sliders. There are like inbuilt methods which we can use uh, present in XUI test framework to uh, which kind of support all these actions. And typing text, as you have seen in the very initial demo, I've used like dot type text to type certain values into the fields. So yeah, that is also a gesture. And by default, I can use dot type text and do the gesture action. Now I'll just show you a quick demo. So in here, I've just uh, uh, added certain basic ones like tab, swipe up, swipe down, and press. Uh, let's quickly see how this works. So the application got launched. So yeah, it tapped on an element. It's doing swipe up and swipe down, and it pressed on item one for some time. So this is how simply you can add in or reuse these functions and do the gestures. Now let's quickly look into parallel execution, how to do parallel execution by yeah. XUI test. Yeah. Uh, I hope my screen is visible and uh, let's get started with the parallel execution. So uh, by default, uh, parallel execution comes along with this uh, export. So I'll sh show you how you can see uh, whether the parallel execution is enabled or disabled in export. So what you can do is you can simply click on this particular target and where you see an option called edit scheme. So I clicked on edit scheme and here if you can, if you can see, right, uh, I, I see my, I mean, UI tests target. So under that, we can see all the, uh, all its UI tests. So if I expand each of this, right, it has a test which starts with the test, the convention of test, naming convention of test. And here you can see something called execute in parallel. So by default, export is enabled with execute in parallel, which you can uh, even disable via this options. So I have clicked on this options and here you can see a checkbox. If you click on this and you can see the text which, which we have seen before is disappeared. So, and now I'll quickly show how we can actually control the uh, emulators, the number of simulators that is, uh, being executed at a time. So the one, I mean, uh, I just want to show, I mean, just, just want to share one of the problem statements that we have faced, which is like, uh, uh, we weren't able to control the number of simulators. Let's say, for example, what XUI test does is it has a, a scheduling algorithm behind the scene. So what it does is it automatically uh, uh, create the number of simulators based on the test files that we have. And uh, it actually created three to four simulators at a time and uh, where we saw some lagging in our machine's performance. So we just wanted to reduce that uh, number of simulators that is being executed at a time. So which we, were, we weren't able to control uh, via the export. So the other option of controlling the number of simulators is via the command line. I'll quickly show that. So let's say, for example, I take a terminal. For some reason, I'm not able to type in the text. Yeah, it works. So, yeah, my terminal is open now. I just navigate to the uh, project directory where my application, the entire project resides. So. So here is where uh, my iOS testing application lies. So before I show you the parallel execution command, I'll just show you uh, the, this is the build, I mean, this is the utility that we are going to use to uh, interact via CLI with the XUI test. So export build is the utility name. So you can actually do hyphen hyphen H through which you can see what all the different options that it offers. Uh, so which you can play around with the executors. So you can see the list of uh, options here. You can just see, let's say for example, parallel testing enable. So these are the two comments that we are going to play around with now. So parallel testing enable, let's say if parallel testing is disabled, you can just enable via providing this. And uh, if you wanna control the number of simulators count uh, at a time, you can probably, I mean, you can just go with this comment, parallel testing worker count. So I'll quickly show how we can do that. So I have a command handle for this. 
I think it's So here, uh, before I execute this command, I just give a quick heads up on this command. Uh, so as I said before, export build is the utility via which we are going to interact with the XUI test and test, uh, we are just going to execute the test, uh, I mean the UI test. So that's why we are just uh, putting an option called test. And here is uh, the workspace. So this is the workspace num name that we are uh, targeting to uh, targeting at, at the same time the scheme uh, if you could see I mean if you could remember uh, I was showing you the scheme and under that I was showing you all the tests that are mapped to that particular scheme so uh, the scheme name is iOS testing and apart from that these are the two options that we in that we are introducing to achieve the parallel execution one is parallel testing enabled so which is yes and then uh, sorry and then the parallel testing worker count which is given us two and the destination, I'm trying to run my test against iPhone 14 Pro simulator. So for that, you can see the command I was simulator for platform. And now I just hit the enter button. The parallel execution would start right away. Yeah, you can see here testing start started. And at the same time, the very beginning, uh, after we executed the command read, it would show us the number of simulators that it has uh, chosen. It would be two. Yeah, it's here. Max parallel testing simulators. And let me look into the simulator. Yeah, it's trying to... Yep, it just started with the execution and you can see here there are clone one of iPhone 14 Pro and clone two of iPhone 14 Pro. And because we have uh, instructed to create two simulators at a time. And what we are trying to see here is uh, it has, it, it, it actually, it needs to, uh, let's say we have seven tests, at least one or two tests has to be run in each of the simulator. That's what an expectation. So. And usually this clone two of simulator would take time. That's because uh, it, it takes its own time to create a simulator and uh, settle down. Because it has its own boot of time. <clears throat> the order of creating simulator is it will first create a clone one and then it will create a clone two. Yep. Now you can see here, I was testing even on clone two, uh, it's, it's automating one of the tests, which we have in the list. Yep. Which you can even see on the command line, like uh, in the terminal that clone two of iPhone 14 pro is executing a particular test, test navigate to button page and git name. And that's all the execution has been done. And, uh, and the result can be seen in derived data. So that's about the parallel execution and this that's how the parallel execution is being achieved. And uh, yeah. moving on to the major challenges that we have faced uh, during our journey. I'm sure you're speaking on here. Okay, am I audible now? Yep. Sorry for that. Yes, so during my time, during our time in iOS testing, there are a couple of challenges which we faced, uh, one of which is working on simulator. Like a few folks have seen to, uh, for the entire of demo, we were doing testing using simulator. It was pretty simple as the app which we have used. It is a very basic app. Like it has like three buttons with just one view it's redirecting to. Uh, and the app takes pretty less time. Like it takes like one to two times in getting built up. And the testing process is very simple as there aren't much of complex features which we are working on. But down the lane, when we work on a real-time project, the app won't be as simple as this. It could have multiple features, multiple pages accommodated to it. For instance, let's take WhatsApp, right? 
so whenever we we open whatsapp there would be three tabs in it like we have one for chats other for status and the next one for calls and even in calls we have like video call or voice call like various option in it in those particular scenarios when the app functionality is too huge the building of the app and kind of installing it on the simulator would take a good amount of time for instance uh, in the retail uh, client for the retail client which i and rajesh have worked for the app size was around 2 gb and it would take us around 15 to 20 minutes of time just to get the build of the app so it would be very tedious very complex in such scenarios so in order to avoid uh, uh, or waste uh, avoid wasting time in those scenarios one of the alternative is to go ahead uh, with a multi module architecture pattern what do i mean by this is uh, we can develop our app in such a way that it is not monolithic but we can create multiple modules like for the same whatsapp which we have taken as example we can have one module which is very specific to voice call one module which is very specific to video call and all these modules we have to ensure that they are independent and testable so what this does is in later down the lane the amount of time in building the modules would be comparatively less because we have like uh, segregated it into different modules so this is one uh, pattern which we can follow from development per se in order to reduce the build time and the other alternative is to download dot ipa so uh, what do i mean by dot ipa is it's a iphone uh, like ios app storage package so whenever we want to publish our apps into app store like for android apps we use play store from where we can download the apps similarly on apple front we have app store so from where we can download and install the apps so whenever we, we want to publish our application which is developed onto the app store we will be creating a dot ipa file from the code which is in there so what we can do is we can directly get this dot ipa file and install it onto our real device or a virtual device uh, so this ipa file is not supported in simulator so you have to go to a other route of going for a real device or a virtual device install the app directly so it's kind of an installer you just need to extract it and do the testing on top of it it also saves your time and reduces the overhead which comes with simulator so these are two alternatives which you can follow whenever you are planning to work with simulator apart from it the other challenge is working with api logs Yeah, the other biggest challenge that we have faced uh, in our journey was like, uh, I mean, as we were completely new to uh, XCUI test, uh, and at the same time testing iOS application, like uh, there was a, uh, uh, like uh, the background work that we were doing was like uh, for a retail client again, uh, for a retail client, uh, we, we were onboarded just to check the uh, front end part of the application. Uh, by replacing the on-premise API to the cloud API. So uh, our primary work was just to validate uh, whether the functionalities in the front end are working fine. At the same time, we have to ensure it's always hitting the uh, API, which are replaced with the cloud one. So uh, what we were doing is whenever we receive a build for testing, so uh, we just uh, uh, like locally up the build and uh, just while doing the functionality testing, we need to, uh, see whether the cloud api is being fit or uh, in the console so what we have to do is every time we have to do a, a like probably command up just try to for, find or try to search for that particular endpoint pattern whether it's there actually it's actually hitting the cloud api or not so that was a, a bottleneck for us and because of that uh it took good amount of time during the testing phase so uh that time we got to know that uh there is a uh, I mean, there is a pro, there is a tool called Solve Proxy. So we were able to set up that for a client, and because of that, uh, we were able to see all the logs in a structured way, and it is altogether a separate tool. It has a clean and neat UI interface. So wherein you will get to see the requests and its corresponding response. And apart from that, few other metadata, whether the uh, what's the status of request, uh, whether it's 200, 400, 404, and along with the different header parameters that is being passed uh, along with the request. So that's one of the other challenges that we had faced during our iOS testing journey. So that's about it. And that's all we had prepared for this particular session. And we are open for Q&A now. Thank you, Ushan. Rajesh Kumar for the session. Like uh, We have two questions on the chat. Yep. 
maybe I can read it out aloud for you. So first question is XCUI test is a Q4S in 2023 and app will be created in both Android and iOS. Only concerned with iOS, it works only for iOS. For Android, uh, we need to duplicate the test, test data, and in fact, everything. As a QA, I feel it's hectic to maintain two different code bases for Android and iOS for end-to-end -end, uh, automation tests. Uh, what's your thought process on this aspect? Would you like to answer? Yes, uh, that's a very fair call out round. As we were highlighting, even at the very start of our presentation, this XCUI test is super good when it comes to iOS specific apps. Like it supports only the iOS platform apps. But whenever we go for concepts like hybrid app, like even for the app development, if you have a common code base, but it gets launched in two different platforms, like for instance, as you are mentioning, I iOS and Android, you have to create two different reports for the test. So as like the drawback of this particular XCUI test is it doesn't have any cross-platform support. So yeah, as it's a very valid call out in such particular scenarios, it's better to choose another tool. But if you are having only a iOS concentrated app, then XCUI test is the most feasible option. Yeah. That's so what you want to add on top. Just to add on top of that, and nowadays even clients prefer to maintain a different, I mean, even client wants to go with the same uh, development tech stack what the application uses. So for those clients, actually, we recommend XA with this because of the advantages that we have highlighted during the comparison, I mean, while walking through the comparison slide as well with respect to the execution time of uh, healthy uh, automation pipeline, you know, with respect to uh, a low test likeness. So that's about it for the first query. And the second query, how about your experience with the XCUA test in automating hybrid apps? And uh, yeah, in our experience, we have got a chance to automate fully the iOS native application. Uh, but uh, while we were preparing all these studies, right? So uh, we got to understand that even uh, XCUA test uh, supports automating hybrid application to some extent. Uh, that's all that we have come across. Would you like to add anything on top of that, Lucia? You pretty much covered it. It's not a full-fledged support, which I see, but uh, it's kind of intermittent. The support which it provides for native-only apps, like native iOS-only apps, is very good when compared to other apps. And next down the lane, we have a question from Srikant. Uh, just wanted to know you perform testing only using simulators or also on real device? Rajesh, do you want to take it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we have even uh, done automation using real devices uh, during our experience. So it was with uh, iPhone 13 and the iPad uh, 9 generation. So are there any questions around that? Oh, uh, this is Arvind. So I have one concern in that uh, uh, XUI testing. Uh, can we automate the QR code uh, kind of thing stuffs in an XUI test? Yeah, good question. But uh, we haven't got a chance to uh, come across such a challenge uh, with XUI test. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, just adding on top of it, Yes, we can even uh, automate the QR code kind of functionalities uh, using XCUI test framework. So it provides us uh, modules, but using via which we can do the automation. Yes, it does support QR testing. Yeah, if it's in a native application, obviously it has to. Yes. Uh, can we give the multiple uh, data through automate this QR? So. Uh, are you asking in terms of automating the QR code? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, actually, in our application, uh, we have a list of uh, uh, components is there. So every components we have pasted uh, uh, QR codes and barcodes. So in that, we have to do automate uh, further frequently. So how do we, uh, the multiple data, can we give it to this uh, XA test? Uh, let's say, for example, while automating with one test, you want to send one set of data. And uh, similarly, for the second set, it's going to be a different set of data for the same QR code aspect, right? Yes. 
okay probably like uh, i have heard of exit test plan so wherein uh, we'll just provide uh, try providing different set of configurations for each of the test set uh, we can have different test plan for each of the test suite so i could say like uh, probably you could try uh, sending different configurations for different in same set okay thank you yeah just uh, i'm just basically. adding uh, yeah and just adding on top right uh, via using xui test framework you can even do mocking so in mocking you can uh, define like different set of data though i haven't explicitly tried but based on the question yeah we can do mocking of different qr codes different data which we want and perform the testing on top hope that helps Uh, they answer your questions. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, hi, I'm Madan. Uh, I have one question. So actually, like uh, during your project testing, uh, you split up those modules into bitter smaller pieces, and uh, you have done your testing. So how was the challenge during the integration and end-to-end -end testing you have faced? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so this modularization was done at the development front. So what we have ensured is from testing per se, we ensure the integration tests are properly happening. Uh, the corresponding, uh, uh, like how we have like uh, unit and integration test or uh, like in iOS print, we have more like service view model test. So we were ensuring at uh, um, module level, all these tests are being covered. And towards the end for end to end testing, there wasn't any visible difference, which I can point out. Rajesh, do you have anything to add on? No, sure. Uh, from end to end per se, there won't be much of impact because at the end of the day, uh, when you do end to end testing, all the different modules which you have created, everything would come in as a whole and you'll be testing it as a whole. So there wasn't any visible impact which we have seen during that phase. Yeah, uh, one more question is, uh, uh, for, for example, you are creating a regression suit for the test cases you have done. So in that case, how we will be executing it, either it uh, continues integration way or a bamboo method you will be using for a batch wise execution during night times or how it will be happening? Yeah, I can take up this question. So as I said before, right, uh, we were having uh, something called test plan, exit test plan. So as part of the exit test plan, uh, we were having two exit test plan. One was to handle all the smoke tests and one was to handle all the regression tests. So what you can do is, and uh, uh, we were also using past lane for managing all these uh, automation stuff. So uh, when you go with past lane, right? So uh, you can simply, uh, there is a tool called past lane. So you can just install that. And when you created all these test plan, you can uh, just give a comment along, I mean, let's say you have fast lane, fast lane after that you give a, there is a comment called scan, which will, which will basically execute all the UI tests that you that, that you have. And along with that, there is an option to uh, send the test plan, what you intend to execute, or uh, let's say regression test. So in that way, we will be, I mean, we'll be executing a particular set of tests at a time. If it's a smoke or you can execute smoke, if it's a regression, you can execute regression based on your need. Yeah, thanks. Any more questions? There are no questions. We 